Hi, I'm Martin Weller and I'm going to be doing this week on the MOOC. And the topic I'm looking at this week is digital scholarship. Uh, and really it's going to be based around this little lovely, which is a book I've just written called The Digital Scholar. Don't worry, you don't have to buy it, although please feel free if you want to. Uh, there's an open access version online. Um, so this may look like a kind of blatant publicity thing, but really the reason I'm basing the course around this book is because I've used up my entire mental capacity writing it, so I've got nothing else uh, left to say, so we're going to have to draw on that. Uh, so I've set out what the course is going to be about. We've only got a week, so first of all I want to think about what is digital scholarship. People often get hung up on definitions and those kind of things, but we'll explore the idea of what it means and whether it's a useful term. And then next I think uh, I want people to choose either to look at the impact of digital scholarship on teaching or impact on research, you can choose one of those. <clears throat> and lastly we'll look at some of the criticisms of digital scholarship and draw some conclusions. And there's something for you to do. What I want you to do at the end of the course, uh, end of the week anyway, is uh, to create a little uh, online clip. It could be a video like this, but maybe better. Uh, a slideshare presentation or uh, just a blog post even. I want you to talk about uh, how you think digital scholarship is impacting on the work you do in, in kind of a positive way, is it making things better, uh, and what are the barriers you've come across maybe. And I'm hoping if we can aggregate all these things together, we can create a nice little picture of what digital scholarship's like currently. Um, just to add, I think there are kind of four main themes I think we'll, that will kind of keep coming up as we go through the week. And for me these are um, the presence of alternatives. So. What digital scholarship does, it doesn't necessarily, people often portray it as a kind of a, an either or thing. It doesn't necessarily replace everything that's gone before, but it gives us alternatives where we didn't have any before. So if you wanted to publish a, something online, if you wanted to publish something, you had to go through a journal uh, or, or write a book or whatever, but now you can create a video, you can write a blog post, whatever. So you have alternatives, and often those things will meet different audiences. <coughs> um, so me, the other thing that I think is important is impact, and the impact comes up a lot in um, research. What we really care about as academics is having impact. We want our stuff to be read by a number of people. So, for instance, uh, open access journals have, tend to have a lot more citations and be read by a wider audience. So, why wouldn't you publish open access? And that's something researchers are really interested in, particularly research funders. I think if we're giving all this money away, why is, is the output of this stuff being locked away? Uh, but also, it doesn't have to be a journal article. Perhaps you know, a, a good video that gets spread around virally might have a greater impact um, than a traditional article. The third thing is um, the, the idea of openness and how that's changing, what it means to be open. And we can kind of get caught up in lots of discussions about that, but I think without sounding too zen-like, it's kind of a, a state of mind, really. The kind of default assumption is that you share uh, everything. Um, and the last issue, the last theme I think that keeps coming up is this idea of tension. I think we're in a very interesting place in terms of digital scholarship at the moment. Um, there's kind of real tension between this kind of really innovative stuff going on and suddenly people thinking, I can do all this stuff that I couldn't do before, I can create wikis for this project, I can do crowdsourcing, I can share stuff in, with new media without having to wait two years for a paper to be published. It's kind of really exciting time in, in, in a way that hasn't had for, we haven't had for a very long time. And at the same time, there are kind of real strong pockets of resistance. You know, uh, in the book I talk particularly about the tenure process and the publishing industry and these kind of real barriers to uptake. But also just kind of culturally, lots of academics feel that it's not properly academic to be working this way. So there's this kind of real tension between things at the moment. Um, and I think that's a very interesting tension and that's something that I hope we get to explore. So I hope you enjoy the week. I hope you enjoy reading bits of the book. And I hope we have a decent chat session on Wednesday, I think, um, and throughout the week.